I have four pieces of equipment on this property that will move a firewood tote. But when I need to move one, I use this one, and here's why. If you have a small piece of property and you want one machine to maintain your property, this probably isn't it. What I would say is that this is giving you increased capacity for this over your BX, but the increased capacity is not the reason to do it. Well, hey there, hobby homesteaders. Welcome back to Peaks Peak. My name's Lucas, and today we are not on Peaks Peak, but we're on Rock Hill Farm because Brock has all kinds of awesome equipment and I'm just having a blast. What do you think, man? I'm excited to have you here, and I'm interested to hear what you think about this machine for the type of operation you've got. Yeah, so the point of today's video, guys, is to just show a piece of equipment that I don't normally have access to and how it would do the work that we're doing in our wood yard. I've been sharing my struggles with using the Kubota BX to move logs and move firewood totes, and we're really pushing the limits of that. And so I've been talking about bigger tractors and all these different options. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and be honest with you. I don't have the money to go out and buy one of these things. So this is not necessarily a purchase I'm considering, but some of you may be, and I wanna learn as much about it as I can while I'm here. We're gonna test lifting logs in comparison to the size that we're lifting with the Kubota. And then the big test for me is gonna be the firewood totes because I know exactly where the line is with my Kubota. And I wanna see what this thing can do. And I have a small tractor, if you're new to my channel, uh, John Deere, that couldn't really handle full totes very well and I did a bunch of expensive upgrades to get it to do it. Right. And so I've been through the exact same thing. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to work and see what this thing's made of. So this is pretty much my first time on the piece of equipment. I'm still getting used to the controls and I'm not very good at it, but it's pretty intuitive and pretty easy to just jump on and operate. Now this first log is one that we're just kind of moving out of the way because we knew we could move it easy enough. This is about the average size of what I'm milling in my wood yard. But the next log, a pretty good sized log that I know I couldn't lift and put onto my mill with my Kubota. So I wanted to test it. So we'll pretend the mill is right here. See if I can get it up high enough. Yeah, I can put that right on the, on the mill. Yeah, so Brock, man, there's no way I could pick this up with the Kubota. By, by a log weight calculator online, I think this weighs 1,300 to 1,400 pounds. Ooh, that's stout, yeah. So it's not incredibly stable picking this up. This is probably the limit of what you'd want to be moving with this. But is this a 12 foot? Yes. Yeah, and probably 18 to 20. Yeah. Yeah, that, and it's, is that oak? What is yes. it? Yeah, that's, yeah. So about a 20 inch diameter by 12 foot oak log. And that's actually bigger than I can even mill on my mill. This would do everything I would need it to do in the wood yard for logs. And if you're pushing capacity, it's all the basic things you already know. Keep your weight low, make sure it's all the way back and tilted back. But there is a weight bracket on here that's made by Bombalite. This does not run out of hydraulic power to lift more. Right. You could lift a lot more. What it runs out of is counterweight. Yep. So if you'd eat more cheeseburgers or fabricate a 200 pound bracket off the back, yeah. you could, hey, this would be more stable, but at some point you've got all the weight you want on the track. Right. Well, I say we start with that steak you mentioned earlier. Yeah. You got that on the grill? I do. <laughs> all right, let's go move some firewood totes. So the first test, I think it passed with flying colors. It, it lifted more than I expected it to. So my next hurdle is, can I move the firewood totes? You saw the lengths I had to go to to get my BX to move a firewood tote, and they are not stacked. Like, he's got nice and neat stacks here, so his firewood totes are going to weigh more than mine do. Mine are also pine. What do you got? 
mostly oak. There's some variety, but three fourths of everything I've split is oak. Yeah, how seasoned is this? Most of these front ones, you can see the back yeah, ones yeah. gray or old. These front ones are only a few months old, so yeah. they're gonna be heavy. Okay. I'd estimate these at 14 to 1500 pounds, yeah. and I use a full firewood toad as a lifting metric for any piece of equipment I have on the property because it weighs about the same amount as a hay bale. Yeah. And I just think it's something that most guys are going to want to be able to handle. Right. That's good. And I also, I, I know the limits of my Kubota. When I put my forks on the three point, uh, I can pick up a full firewood tote of pine that's thrown in there. And I'm estimating that I'm looking at about a thousand to 1200 pounds tops and that's just getting it about six inches off the ground so that i can move it around if you're going over rough terrain you're going to struggle with that so and i sell these and so i don't just want to be able to move it from here to there i want you to be able to come to my house hand me the money i set it in your truck bed and say yeah. bring this back when you get a chance yeah that that's a that's a big point so i've got to be able to get it up in the air right i'm going to now i'm pretty new at this so i'm going to have to take my time and kind of keep them low to the ground but i'm going to try to move these firewood totes over to his new wood storage shed because that's kind of what he's going to be doing in real life when he splits wood he'll be hauling them down here and parking them in his woodshed so i want to see if this thing will accomplish that another steak all right guys I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna lift this up just to kind of feel it and try not to turn it over so guys this is Brock being a good friend and coming over to remind me what happened the first time he lifted a firewood tote in the air and how to avoid it So th this is a very capable machine and you can definitely pick them up higher than I could pick them up with the three point on the Kubota. And I'm not even considering this with the, the forks on the front of the Kubota. So already we're out doing what you could do with my subcompact tractor. But with a full tote like this, you're definitely at your limits. You got to take it slow. When the gravel started sloping in, it wanted to, st to start teetering up and I had to work the angle of the load to try to keep it from tipping up. What I would say is that this is giving you increased capacity for this over your BX, but the increased capacity is not the reason to do it. It's the convenience of on and off tight spaces right. and maneuvering. So you're getting some increase in capability, right. but a bigger tractor for the same price would do that. What you're really getting is that tight little package to work in tight spaces. Right. Here's what I learned from this mini skid steer. Because driving this thing is a pleasure. It, it really is. To be able to spin it around in tight spaces. My wood yard's not very big. I don't have a lot of space. So you make a really good point about the fact that this shines in those tight spaces. So I've had it seven months and I'll give you kind of the pros and cons and real quick who I think this might be for. If you have a small piece of property and you want one machine to maintain your property, this probably isn't it because you need a brush cutter. Right. And you can get a brush cutter for this, but it's more expensive and it's slower because it's narrower. 
Now, if you have multiple pieces of equipment or you're looking to sell firewood or you're working in tight spaces, residential areas, then this is a, the machine for you. It's phenomenal as a forklift inside of my building. I can go inside my Quonset hut where I cut wood and turn 360 holding a log. And you wow. can't do that with anything but a skid steer or a mini X. And those machines cost twice what this one does. Right. So this is a, if you like the advantages of a skid steer, this is half the price, half the footprint, right. half the capacity. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, Brock, I really appreciate you letting us try out your equipment. I mean, and trust me, I wasn't easy on it. And I had the thing tipped up and probably scared him a little bit a few times. But, you know, it's kind of at my own risk and I had fun. Yeah, I I'm appreciate glad, it. You, glad you came down and tried it. Yeah, had a good time. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, getting to see some new equipment that we don't have. Until next time, don't forget to get outside and enjoy God's creation. It's beautiful out here. Y'all have a good day.